Hey, it's Humble the Poet. Just want to remind you to be unique and be Inoki. Rapper, spoken word artist, and author Humble the Poet is a man who can make you think. His debut novel, Unlearn 101, gave us a list of 101 simple truths on how to live a better life. And his new novel, Unlearn Beneath the Surface, gives us a deeper look at life and how we live in our own realities. From Unlearn 101 to Unlearn Beneath the Surface. You're coming from a teaching background as well and you've got a really unique philosophy on life and learning and what it means to be a person in this day and age, you know? T tell me about that. So pretty much being a teacher kind of taught me how to take ideas and make them easier to present to people so they can digest it. So it's kind of, you can explain it to an eight-year-old, you can explain it to anybody. And I came out with a book on Learn 101 uh, two years ago, and I was telling about the transition. A lot of the lessons I learned, as unique as they are, is pretty much kind of coming from being a school teacher, working, having a government job, having a salary every two weeks, being plugged into the world, and leaving all of that to get into entertainment, which is uh, dog eat dog, not the most friendly, not the kind a place that really celebrates authenticity or anything like that so I kind of all the lessons I learned are kind of documented and made unlearned and uh, the feedback I got was they really liked it but they said we didn't learn anything about you mm -hmm. from unlearn. I purposely did that because I really didn't want to make it about myself I wanted to make it about the ideas not realizing that anybody we have a conversation with the conversation has more value when we connect with each other. Yeah. So unlearn beneath the surface kind of the idea of, okay, let's scratch beneath the surface. Let me share the story behind the lessons that I shared the first time. So, you know, I talk about stories about the time I got jumped and robbed in New York. The times that I was a child and I saw my father get attacked, losing family members, getting my heart broken. Just all the different things that we all go through in life. Mm -hmm. And I want someone to take away from this being like, well, I've had similar experiences. I like the way he looked at it. It's all about how he handled it versus the actual events that happened in his life. You're talking about connectivity here and living an authentic life. How has that shaped you? Because I'm sure you've learned from your own lessons, maybe. Well, the big reason I got into teaching was kind of the, the romanticized idea they sold to you. They're like, you know, being a teacher, you're going to impact the kid's lives, you're going to change things. A teacher's not here to fill a kid's head with knowledge. A teacher's here to light a fire inside of them, yeah. you know. But once you get into the actual classroom, you got 30 kids, you're just, you're, 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 you're doing a lot of behavioral management, you're doing a lot of paperwork, you're dealing with government standards, then you, the reality kind of hits you. So I kind of looked at it as like, well, what elements of this do I love? And let me create a life with that. And what I do love is the fact that I want to light a fire in people. Yeah. I want to have that relationship. Uh, I don't want them to necessarily look at me as somebody who's smarter than them or more wise. I want them to look at me as somebody that, hey, he's really good with words. He can put what I'm feeling into words. Uh, and he gets me energized and inspired. And at the same time, I, you know, there's no test at the end of anything I say. You know, you go off and live it and do it. And at the same time, also with this book, I, I hope to show that, wow, you really are an extremely ordinary, normal person, you know, who is no different than anybody else. Because the moment people start to think that I'm special in any way from them, then we've disconnected already. And I want them to know, no, I'm literally the same person. I've just been gifted with a couple of opportunities to look at life different. They told him the grass was greener with an endless flood of possibilities. Katrina, watch him drown in debt. Land confiscated by the local government, so he flies high in a jet plane. Plain clothes just exposed him to the harsh winters of life, and his wife won't know about the sweat soaked in the bank note sent home. Boy getting grown, he starts to groan. How have you grown in this? You know, I'm, I'm coming back to that because you've been on an incredible journey. Yeah. You know, you rap, you do spoken word artistry, you get on stage, you speak to millions and millions of people all over the world. A lot of youth, you know, people in their impressionable agents too, who are looking to you as a figure to be inspired by. You're suddenly put on a pedestal. You're given all of this importance mm -hmm. and you're doing something with it though. But how have you been shaped? The first book was me bursting the bubble, pretty much. I was, yeah. a, I was an idealist. A lot of idealism occurred on how I approached music, how I approached my career. I just thought, you know, being talented and being a nice person was enough to kind of make it far and then kind of realizing what the terrain and the environment really was and having to kind of learn the game, uh, you know, to play the game. And now I'm in a position where I've gotten a little bit of success and so now my focus is to change the game. And it's interesting because I feel like I'm going back to who I was, mm -hmm. but with more knowledge now. So now I'm actually going back to being like, hey, now I only want to focus on being authentic, 
uh, sharing my talents and working very hard. Before I end, I, I do want to know what you want people to take away from the new book as, as a message, as a takeaway. I want them to take away the idea of self-empowerment. I want them to see a story of a person who experienced something, hardship, uh, successes, wins and losses, and made a decision on how they want to look at it and what they want to learn from it. I do this for the girls who pay for miracles. Hand puppets, they get material. Staring at the sky waiting for replies, but they ain't coming like the 30th of February. Yo, but let them soak in. And they can't get up and do the things that's necessary. But he keep hoping, he's staring at the front door, wonder if he should go in. He's staring at the same door, wonder why she can't get out. Little boy be upstairs, scared in the minute. The business to his ear, I mean the razor to his ear. Looking at the sister in her room, with a best friend. She more than a best friend, ain't something she can fetch yet. Love trapped in the closet, waiting to escape. Cause she got that key, locked it, gave the way for the same. What the fuck?